Hello, everyone. Welcome to Endgame class. It's our biggest turnout ever. One. No, we have more than one. Um, we only have one player rated over a thousand. No, they all are. Well, I don't know about him. Okay, so um, as I was saying to you before the class, you claimed to watch my lectures, but then you failed the test, which was uh, theory and practice are the same in theory, but, in practice. but not in practice. I sent you the lines over. Did you get to check your email last night? Mm -hmm. I sent you, and you're supposed to read. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, so some of my endgame lectures are theoretical, where I show you positions that didn't exist, but they would help you with all kinds of positions, and you would forget them. Okay. And then there's practical positions where they're actually games, where that guy played that guy. Okay. So you're like, oh, I learned this ending, but it was different. Then you fail miserably because it's different. So these are actual games, and these were actually all played in the last four days. And I told the computer I wanted everybody to be over 2,700. And it said no, and I said I insist. <laughs> so that's what we did. Okay, so um, there were several strong tournaments going on recently, but you guys only know about the London Chess Classic. And when I say you only know about that, you don't know that. Okay. And who won the London Chess Classic? Man, he was like, I know the. He's like, well, don't call on me. The last round. I, was, I was at work. I didn't get to see it. You. Bobby. Fabi Bobby Bobby won the London Chess Classic. Now, what you didn't know is they're having the mind games sport in China. So there's like GMs everywhere. There's other games too, not just chess. And that's a very strong tournament, also. And also, they're having like uh, the championship of some other stuff, rapid tournaments, all kinds of stuff. So there's many strong tournaments going on. Right now, currently, although not for you, there's the Russian Super Championship. Okay, and that's all the best Russian players. Who's in first place? Now, first of all, have any of you heard of him? I'm going to say one of you's heard of him. His name's Fedoseyev. Man, we got nothing over here. No? You heard of Fedoseyev? You're one. Yeah. Fedoseyev plays like a lunatic every game. He doesn't know what a draw is. So he wins with black a lot. And also, like, if he needs a draw for first place, he's not going to draw. He's either going to win or lose. He doesn't know what a draw is. So Fedosev's great, and he's in first place. And he was 4-0 and against, like, 2700s. And he started losing all his games, and he won again. So he's still in first. Anyway, that's going on right now. That's going to finish in a couple days, the Russian Super Championship. Okay, but let's talk about this game was played in China. Okay, so one of Donald Trump's favorites. And... We go, we go with this position. This is uh, Mamadov, who's 2,700, versus Ding Lirin, who you've all heard of. And Ding Lirin is the highest rated player in China, and that's not easy to do. China's tough. Okay, and uh, Mamadov, of course, is from... Anybody? Russia? Eh, close. Siberia. Siberia? That's in Russia. All right. The correct answer, of course, is Azerbaijan. Yay. Okay. So, um, Mamadov's playing Ding Lirin. Now, it's Black's move here, and material is equal, right? Yeah. You agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, now we're going to vote on who has the advantage. Mm -hmm. And then, usually when we vote, it's 50-50 like around here. Okay, then I'll explain why somebody has the advantage. Um of some importance, possibly a lot of importance, is whose move it is. Whose move is it? Black. Black's. That guy's right. Yeah. So black to move. Who has the advantage here? I'll drink coffee while you're thinking about it. Definitely black. Yeah. Black. 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 Always bet on black? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The correct answer is black, and there's two reasons for that. Or the three. No, just two. Well, wait. Three. Yeah, there's three reasons why black has the advantage. Let's name all three of them. I'm too lazy to tell you. Somebody name one. You, incorrect. Pawns on both sides of the board. Pawns on both sides was the hardest one. When it's a bishop versus a knight, pawns on both sides, bishop. The truth hurts. You, you raise your hand. Um, black has a pass pawn further down the board. Well, I didn't think of that. That's four reasons. They both have passed pawns, but Black's is closer to queening. Yeah, I like that. Good job. Black's bishop controls white possible queening square. That's correct, but that would happen... Actually, that only happens half the time. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't thinking of that, but that's okay. Good, good, good answer. 
Anybody? Um, you. Uh, whites. Right. I know what you're going to say. You just can't say it. But I know what you're going to say. What was I going to say? You're going to say pawn structure, no good. No. no oh, okay. Terrible. Really you. Um, black has adjacent pawns. Well, actually three. That, well, I guess it goes with the pawn structure you were just saying. Right, yeah. White, white's pawn structure is very suspicious. And then and black's pawns are all next to each other. Yeah. Okay. And nobody mentioned the thing that I say every lecture in every class. Nobody said it. Yeah. But that's it's, what I was going to say, but I, I right. Bla does black have an easier action? He does, because it's black's turn to move. Yeah, so black to move, black's going to get his king further up the board. I wonder what black played. King G6. Yeah, if you don't play king g6, you got to leave. Okay, you have to move your king up in the ending. I know you won't, but you have to anyway. Okay, and in fact, we're going to get to the London Chess Classic, and, and, and you guys will forget, even though I'm telling you now, there's no way you'll remember. And then... Because it'll be like 20 minutes from now. And then the guy's in check, and he can move his king up or back. He moved it back, which was a losing move. And he's old, too. you think if he was like, you know, you guys, would be like, yeah, I don't know, I'm my king. He's old, like me, and he still didn't move his king up. <sighs> Horrible. Okay, so king g6. F3. Now, why is that a bad move? Because it puts the pawn on the same color as the bishop. He fails to move his king. He's obstructing his king's check. Can you believe this? At home, they're like shaking their head. I have a one million percent that Archer's correct. One million. You. Never play F3. Never play F3. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And you didn't even yell out. You were like, <sighs> me. Right, never play F3. Now, he had a good reason for playing F3, but he forgot it was F3. Um, as you pointed out, or was it you? Which, which one of you pointed it out? No, one of you pointed out. Yeah, it was you, right? Yeah, who are you? Sir. You still? Still? Yeah, still. Okay. So you pointed out the bishop controls the queening square, and white must have heard you. So he played f3, and now if I push my pawn, you, you can't play bishop e4. And you're not going to, like, do that because my white the white king is there. You're not going to do that because your pawn's there. So, yeah, it looks good. Okay. And unfortunately... Does that get the white king up the board? No. No. And what would Gregory Kaidanov say? He would say black is up a king. No. Yeah. Okay, so black played. King, king F5. King F5. Yeah, you guys are geniuses now. Okay, A4. King E5. Now, pushing your pawn doesn't work. It's like when Homer took the weight gain stuff to gain weight, the guy said, lucky for you, this stuff don't work. Okay. He was trying to gain weight to get on disability. Good plan, right? He, he did it too. And he can work at home. Okay. So if you push your pawn, I, I, you, that doesn't work. I can prove it too because you guys don't believe me. And now most of you believe me, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got to move the knight. So he moved the knight. If you move the knight somewhere else, black's going to C3, C2, C1. Now black's has trouble playing c3 because it's illegal king d4 it's amazing that black was better and black won and black moved his king every move i think white moved his king every move too how many king moves did white make um at least two at least zero at least no, no, I mean for, since we started this position. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. At least two. He castled and played king h2. Yeah, I don't know what he did actually, but yeah. Okay. So since we started the end game, white's king is on h2 and black's king is the greatest. I guess 2700s can't play the end game. Okay, so he moved his knight, obviously. Oh, a5, he tricked me. And then black took and white queened and white won the game, right? Mm -hmm. What? What? Okay. He was kidding. Okay, so what did Black do? Uh, king e3. King e3. Should we kick him out? Yeah. Okay, you're kicked out. After king e3, a6, what do you do? Yeah, why are you? I'm trying to play a6, a7, a8, and you ran your king the other way. But you try to activate your king, so you get extra credit. You get extra credit for moving your king up. I like that. Yeah, there we go. Now, so who said something else? I, I said uh, king c5. Okay. 
Bishop F5, X clam. So King C5 is also good, but now it's hard for black to win because the way to win is to do this. So if you move away, you can't. The bishop isn't doing anything. It's not helping this pawn queen. It's not stopping this pawn. So bishop f5, and obviously he's going to get bishop around there. a6, bishop d7. Could also play bishop c8. This stops knight b5 check. Bishop c6. Now, as you pointed out, Jacques, right? Your name's like almost French too, so that was good. Almost. It's not really, but close. Now, this stops this forever, and this doesn't stop this forever, because black's up a king. Now, when I was at Nationals in Orlando a few days ago, I looked at a lot of kids' games, so give me, let me, give me a second. I noticed whenever it was legally possible to capture something, that was the only move that was made, because otherwise, you know, you're not kids anymore. So a lot of people would suggest knight b5 check, and what black must take it based on the rules of kids' chess, and then white queens. But these aren't kids, so black would move his king. Right? Yeah. And, I mean, this is just hopeless. Black is up a king. My king is doing something, and white's king is hiding. So this is horrible. Okay, so he obviously moved his knight. King went to c5. It doesn't really matter. I think king d3 must also win. King there. Now knight b5 is less good. Man, the truth hurts. He played king e3. Obviously, king d2 wins, but this is meaner. Okay, somebody explain why he played king e3, other than it's meaner than king is somewhere else. Prevents white from activating his king. That's right. Yeah, so he's doing two for one. His king's really good here, and this king will never be good. Never. Yeah, and he can push his pawn at his will. Yeah. Like Anthony and the Johnsons. No, man, that's a complicated joke. Even I didn't get it. I'm, I'm like, nobody at home got that joke. That was a complicated joke. You know who would get that joke? My mom. That's, that's a tough joke. Okay, it's the only joke I've ever made that she would get. And nobody else would get it. Okay, so King G3. You're all Leonard Cohen fans, all of you? What about you? He's all right. I don't mean his singing. I mean like this, you know. He's all right. No? You know the song, If It Be Your Will? Nope. <sighs> Pretends to be a musician. Okay, King G3. He likes when I say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But on the inside, murderous rage. Okay. Then bishop takes f3. h4. Now, what is white doing wrong the last two moves? Anybody know? The answer is very funny. What's he doing wrong the last two moves? Yeah, this was tough for my class. He's not resigning. That's, yeah. In fact, let's go back. Now, what's the material situation it's too hard? It's too equal. Equal. If I turn on the engine, what's the number going to be? Uh, it's equal. No. Uh, five. No, no. I don't know what the number is going to be. I would guess. Nine point. Yeah, I would guess at least eight. And it's equal material. That's, I would guess uh, 8.5 million. 8.5 million, wow. Yeah, it's going to get to eight pretty quick. Pretty quick. It's like, hmm. The more it looks at it, it's like, hmm, it's not good. Like Why is it on two CPUs? Man, no wonder it's not getting to quickly. Oh. oh, four CPUs. Oh, snap. Now that my computer broke. Yeah. There we go. Good good job, Archer. Yeah. So material's equal, but black's up a king. And I know what a king's worth. About eight. Yeah. And by the way, when you're like a beginner or you guys... And I'm like, how was your game? Well, I was up one, then he was up two, and you guys mean the material. Okay, and a lot of you mistakenly say when you're up a bishop for two pawns, which probably never happened. Let's say you're down a bishop for two pawns. That way you're more at home. Yeah. Okay, he got it. Then you're like, oh, I was down one. Because a bishop is worth three and two pawns is worth two. Oh, what would a grandmaster say? I was down a bishop. Well, they would say I was up a bishop because they're grandmasters. <laughs> okay. So here, material is equal, and white must resign. Did white resign? No, never resign. So king g3 takes h4, g4. Man, this is harsh. Black wins everywhere. Man, what a mean guy. 
And finally he resigned. Horrible. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Well, he did win a pawn. 57. No, no, he did win a pawn. So now, like 57. Because he took that F3 pawn that was really important for play F3. Okay. So all those things that we said came true. The bishop was better than the knight. The bishop was doing everything. The black king was better. White's pawns were weaker. And black did all that stuff, right? So, and, and the bishop stopped the pawn from queening. It was great. Yeah. And for some reason, Dingler Inn's really good. Like Mamadov, you've never heard of. And nobody's disagreeing with me. But Dingler Inn, like half of you have heard of him. Yeah, no, it's nothing. Yeah, about, about half. Yeah. And some of you know that in March, some of you know, there'll be the candidates tournament. It's a double round robin, eight players. Let's ask a mathematician. You. Mm -hmm. If there's eight players and it's a double round robin and you, you play in the tournament, how many games do you play? I know, 16. 28. 14. What's a round robin? No, that's correct. Round robin is when you play everybody. Okay. It's a double round robin. So your answer was really good, except your answer is very common. But you had the right answer. Yeah. Yours would be a quadruple round robin. That would be scary. That's happened before. If it was 28 rounds, that would take a long time. And they've done that. In fact, if Yasser was here, and I can be Yasser, I could even talk like Yasser, then you know, I'll get sued by myself. I'll pay to hear that. I've, I've done it. Yeah. Now, in this position. So, Yasser actually played in one of these tournaments in the 70s and or 80s, mainly 80s. They had tournaments in Indonesia, your favorite country. And... They were like 27 round tournaments with 28 players and they would go city to city. They'd play seven games in one city, go another one. Tournaments would take over a month. Okay, that's crazy talk, right? Yeah, they don't do that now. Okay, so Dingler in wins, go Dingler in. Okay, next. How come his opponent isn't known? Oh, he's known, you, you guys just don't know him. How come we don't know him? <laughs> well, Dingler in is 27.70. So he's like number 12 in the world. And the other guy is like number 45 in the world. That so, that yeah, I mean, and, oh, I was making a really long, complicated point, but I forgot, which happens a lot when you get older like me. Um, Ding Lerin is one of those eight players who's playing in the candidates. Okay. I was saying there's this candidates tournament. It's 14 rounds, like she said. Whoever wins that tournament plays for the world championship next year. So it could be Ding Lerin, but not that other guy. Okay. So when I say it could be Ding Laren, it, it won't be Ding Laren. It's um, Fabiano Caruana, Wesley So, Vladimir Kramnik, Levon Aronian, Ding Laren, Sergei Karyakin. I did good, six off the top of my head. Um, Mama Jarov, who famously lost to me earlier in the year on the internet. And then I'm missing the eighth, the, the last guy, Grishuk, Alexander Grishuk. I did it. So whoever wins that tournament will play Carlson for the World Championship which you'll be glad to hear. I'm not sure why he'll be glad to hear. We'll be in London. Um, not sure why he's glad to hear it. Uh, I think in November, I think. Yeah. Okay, and then, man, I don't know. Carlson probably beat those guys. Okay, now, I learned this a long time ago. I don't remember who told me this. It could have been my dad. But they told me in Queen and Rook endgames, Queen and Rook against Queen and Rook, and the most famous Queen and Rook ending is which, end, which, which two players? No, nothing? The most famous, Lasker Schlechter. You've heard of Emmanuel Lasker. I have. You haven't heard of Carl Schlechter. Anybody heard of Carl Schlechter? You would have heard of him if the game had turned out differently. Then he was the world champion. Then you would have heard of him. Uh, Carl Schlechter played a match with Lasker for the world championship. And after nine games, the score was five to four for Schlechter. And Lasker won the 10th game, tied the match, and, became, and retained his title. And you never heard of Schlechter. Okay, and there is the selective variation in the Slav defense. You should have heard of it anyway. Anyway, there's argument to this day about if Schlechter had drawn the game, if he would have been the world champion. There's an argument about, like, he had to win by two, and they said, no, he didn't. I don't know. Anyway, that was a queen and rook ending, and it was very complicated, and Schlechter made a mistake. This is also a queen and rook ending, and this was played yesterday. And this was in a blitz game. This was a five-minute game. 
Okay, and this five-minute game made Caruana the champion. Now, you might think, oh, he won a five-minute game. Who cares? The answer is fries. No, the answer is when they had the playoff for first place, the winner got the money. So the players cared a lot. First prize was $75,000. Second prize was $50,000. So whoever won this blitz game got $25,000 more. That's sort of complicated. Okay. And the move played was queen takes B3, equalizing the material. In the professional opinion of my wonderful audience, who's king is safer? White. White. Yeah, white's king is safer. And I was taught that's all that matters. Past pawns don't matter. Number of pawns don't matter. King safety matters. Black's king is very suspicious. And in blitz chess, you don't want your king to be suspicious. Also suspicious was both players had about 30 seconds here, and every move Caruana played was correct. So don't play him. Okay, also his FIDE rating is like 2810, so don't play him. He's the only player in the world over 2800 who's not Carlson. Okay, so let's vote. This will be a landslide victory. Should white trade queens or not? Then what happens is black would win and win $25,000 more. If you trade queens, black's king is better than white's, and black has a passed pawn and white doesn't. So probably, like, white's losing here. Maybe he can draw, but I doubt it. I really doubt it. Okay, let's see. I'm thinking, like, 2.1 for black. But I don't know because I'm crazy. Right? Crazy like Fox News. Yep, that's why I'm a GM and you guys are sitting in some club somewhere. Yeah. So, Yeah. Yeah, so when I said 2.1, I'm going to be pretty close when it stops thinking. It'll never stop thinking, so, yeah. All right, so you guys agree that I was correct, even if I wasn't. Close yeah, you guys are like, wow, it's getting close to 2.1. How'd you know that? Yeah. yeah. I'm not as bad as I play. play pretty bad, too. It's going the wrong way. I'm as bad as I play. Okay, so anyway, queen takes queen is insane because black's king is exposed, and after that, black's king is great. Also, it breaks a very important rule. Never trade. Never trade. So he played queen g5 check. I have a question. I have an answer. Uh, what about f4 here? f4 is legal. Okay. Then I would move my king because you checked me. Okay. And then you gave me an extra passed pawn. Oh. But I have two connected passed pawns. And my king is safe because you blocked your queen, right? But since you're a kid, you're like, check. And then you did cartwheels. And I can't do cartwheels, so I don't do that. Right? If I could do cartwheels, I would play f4 check, but I can't. So. After f4 check, I would guess black is better because I think black's king can hide, and I think you give me an extra pass pawn. Okay, so check. Run, run, run from the queen. Check. Run. Rook d2. What's funny is if it was black's move, queen d1 makes a lot of sense, right? Now it makes less sense. And if you're going to take one of these pawns, it's not going to be this one. That one's protected. That one, very suspicious. So usually, when you're in time trouble, every move is check. Mm -hmm. And even though they have seconds on their clock, rip d2, the best move. Now, this pawn's weak, this pawn's weak, and I took away your best move. Good square for the rook. Okay, h4. Pawn was hanging, now it's not. This gives black more perpetual check ideas because the pawn's on h4. Pawn's better on h4. Right. Queen f5 check, double attack, right? Okay. Now I could have played queen takes e4, but I'm really, oh, then you could trade queens. You might not lose then. Queen b1 check. Takes, takes, yeah, that might not be winning. Okay, so check, defends the pawn, check. And black has no time on his clock. He's moving his king. Queen d4, always repeat, and then yum, 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 take the pawn. Now now white has a passed pawn, and now some of the rook endings are winning because they took a pawn. So he stopped queen e7, check. Check. Queen a5, check. Now some of you would block with the queen, and then you would cry a lot if white played. There's two good answers. I'll accept either one. 
rook c2 I accept, and the more flamboyant rook d5. Yeah. yeah, so he didn't do that because he's 27 20. So. Also, this wasn't rated. This is a blitz game. In the actual tournament, Napomniachi gained 20 rating points. So he's 2750 now. Yeah. Okay, so he played king d6 because that's the best move. King c4 is not good, right? Queen takes d5 check. Harsh. Okay. Queen d8, always repeat. h4. This is a good plan. If black stops that plan, he'll get mated. He's got to save his king and stop the h pawn. Okay. e3, you must get counterplay. If you don't do anything, I'll do this. Okay. And white played the best move. Who can find it? The answer is Caruana. But can, all, can any of you find it? You! Queen e7. Queen e7. You're a genius of the highest caliber. Now, if you retreat, probably queen takes e3 check is winning. I'll be two pawns up in a rook ending for nothing. So king b5. Does white want to trade queens? No. I guess. So how did he attack every single black piece? All of them. Yeah, but what move did he make? Queen yeah, now all of them are attacked. Aren't you shocked? Oh, wow. Yeah, the truth hurts. Okay, so black only has one move. Fries. What's that? Fries. Fries. Yeah, close. What? From C6. Illegal. It's on C6. Oh, C6. Yeah, if you don't, your, your king can't protect both of these because kings don't move that way. So you have to play rook B6. If you play here or here, you lose your rook. If you go somewhere else, you lose your queen. Okay, now we're going to vote. It won't be a landslide victory this time. You can vote for rook takes d5 or queen takes d5. One's green and one's red because that's the way it worked. Huh? Voting's fun. In fact, you guys already know the answer to this, but we're voting today in Alabama. Scary. Okay, who says the green move? Green, yeah. Green, green light? Yeah. Who says the red move? And you abstain? Um. Yeah, yeah, I like red. So two red and four green? I told you it would, wouldn't be, yeah. Well, I got bad news for some of you. One of those moves doesn't win. You're not winning anymore. 25,000 down the drain. Yeah, queen takes is a mistake. Then I take, you take, I go here. And now what do you do? Yeah, you, you might lose. You might not lose, but you might lose. Make a move for white that doesn't lose. Rook e5. Rook e5. I said make a move that doesn't lose. Nobody listens to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're going to lose now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the truth hurts. Let's see what the engine says. Does rook d1 draw? Ooh, rook d1, black's much better. Black's equal. Yay, he drew. Yeah, you're going to get to king and rook against king and three pawns, and it says it's a draw. I'm surprised that's a draw. I think black would win. Okay, so black can still, yeah. Okay, so Fabi being 2,800, played rook takes d5. <clears throat> King c4, and now Fabi made the best move with like seconds on his clock. Really good move. After this move, it's over. There's nothing, there's no more, no more issues. No more tears. Uh, this move's not easy to find, and with no time on your clock, it's impossible to find. So very good by Fabi. He earned his 75,000. Queen F7? Yeah. Queen F7, indeed. Yeah. Defense. He saved everything, right? Yeah. Okay. And after takes, he stood with the king. He's like, so? You got nothing. You're all talking a badge. Now, I was watching this live, and Napomniashi noticed he had one second on his clock. So he moved, because that's a good idea. His move was not good. But it's okay. He's dead lost. That's lucky. I'm sure he was happy to find out he was dead lost the whole time. 
Otherwise, he'd be like, oh, on move 62, I could have done this, and I could have won. But he was always losing. So that's good. Yeah. If he was winning at some point, he'd be like, oh, I could have won this game. He, yeah. he played. Now, if you watch a lot of television and movies where there's chess, you'll see this all the time. In real life, you never see it, but now we're going to see it. He played check. Look, D2. Yeah, whenever you get checked in the movies, the response is always check also. Yeah. I'm not sure how. But here, but get check. And then Fabi played check. Yeah. Then he was pretty confident. Yeah. And yeah, then the one second didn't matter. But I think White played perfect every move. So that's pretty good when you have seconds on your clock. Yeah. And then, like, when you're in time trouble and you're moving instantly and you have seconds and then you win 75,000, you win the tournament, you, you're, like, shaking or nervous or something. When he got interviewed, he sounded as bored as ever. Like, he always, if you, know, if you ever see him interviewed, he's like, yeah, today I wasn't very nervous because I had such a long game with Michael Adams that I didn't really have time to be nervous and uh, sort of happy I won. Well, yeah, I won. I've won before. Now, as I pointed out on Twitter today, which Karen obviously knows, but nobody else does, there were three Americans playing in London. Hikaru, Fabiano, and Wesley So. Oh, I saw your comment. What? You saw it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been on Facebook, too. Yeah, it's, everything's everywhere. Yeah, and they lost zero games. Yeah. That's not a lot of games because they played 24 games. It's hard to lose zero games because everybody's 2,800. So that's yeah. a yeah. tough tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Magnus Carlsen lost a game. Karyakin lost two games. and Anand lost three games, right? But they lost zero. The three of them added up. Is, is Magnus becoming a grandmaster of the past, or was it just his bad cold? Well, I was jokingly, half-jokingly, get him in my great players of the past to a Magnus lecture. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So I've been complaining about Magnus for a long time because the only thing those guys care about as far as their chess strength is these tournaments. When they play like in a blitz chess or bug house or rapid, yeah, whatever. They just want to get paid. But when you play... Round robin or double round robin against all 27, 2800s, you've got to win those tournaments. Then you show you're dominant. And in that ilk of 27, 50 and above tournaments where everybody's playing round robin, your favorite format, everybody plays everybody, it's been about 17 months since Magnus won one of those. Okay. He did. Now, what's also strange, Magnus is better at blitz and rapid. And if you don't believe me, go to the chess.com matches. Wow. I'm scared. I don't want to go. I'm afraid to go on chess.com. He wins so many games against Wesley So and who's the other guy he beat horribly? He beat everybody horribly. And he beat Grishuk? Uh, he beat, yeah, he beat Grishuk, but not horribly. He just beat him a little. Wesley So he beat horribly, and he beat that first guy. You know what his name was? That first guy. Uh, Gadir Gusenov. He was my teammate in the, we, he, he lost by like 20 points. It was like, it was like 19 games. So anyway, my point, the point of the story is Magnus is really good at rapid and blitz and he didn't win the world blitz or the world rapid. Now, shockingly, who won the world rapid? Remember I said shockingly. He's the current world rapid champion. He's older than me. That's why it's shocking. Um, he is older than me, but he doesn't play anymore. So no. Vasily. Ivanchuk. Ivanchuk is the world rapid champion. Ahead of Carlson. And then the World Blitz was won by Karyakin. Karyakin's really good at Blitz. And you guys know the result, but don't tell us. I mean, them at home. Uh, in two, in Saturday, the 16th? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nakamura Karyakin on chess.com. Oh. And people are like, oh, Nakamura's great. Karyakin's great. So that's, that's going to be a really close match. Like, Nakamura and Karyakin are really good at Blitz. And Karyakin's a World Blitz champion, so... And then the winner plays Magnus, and Magnus beats them. Okay, so Magnus is having a tough time lately, and this tournament was just, he said this was his worst tournament ever as far as him is playing. And in Norway, about three years ago, he lost four games and came in last, and he said he played better there than here. He said he played worse here. So anyway, the truth hurts. Okay. Now this was played in China, and we're going to vote. Well, we're going to vote on this move. How's that? That's good voting, right? Okay. Now, uh, before I give my spiel, it's Black's move because White just played there, right? Okay. So who's better and why? And how much better? 
or not? Is white better? Is black better? Is it equal? If somebody is better, how much? You, you've answered immediately. Wow. I think white's somewhat better. Okay. Yeah, you? Yeah, white's, I'm going to say one or two points better. That's a lot better. Well, yeah? I'll say white. I don't know. A four and four and a half. Okay. Everybody likes white. Now, that's correct. And white's better for many reasons. Many. Okay, white's rook is great. Black's rook is not great. White's bishop is great. Black's bishop is not great. White has a passed pawn. Black doesn't have a passed pawn. Okay. And this endgame actually features something very interesting, which is actually, I, I don't have it here, is why Wesley So drew against Magnus Carlsen in the London Chess Classic, also rook and bishop ending. And Ivanchuk did the same thing, but it didn't work. But he tried. And trying is the first step. Good kids. Good job. Okay. So, yeah. So actually, Black has a tough time here. And when you're a lower-rated player like you guys, you're just like, rawr, and you play C5 and D6 and hang all your pawns and resign. When you're old, like Mama Jarov, who's not old, he's old compared to you two, you just move around and do nothing, and your opponent like gives all his pieces away because Black can't move. So here, Black is suffocated. So white can just do nothing, and black's like, it's my move. I can't move. Okay? And most low-rated players just play crazy. F4, D6, Rook takes F7. Those are the craziest moves I can think of. Okay. Black play King E8, obviously. If you want to suggest another move, you can. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's hard to suggest a legal move. This is really bad. Now, King E8 makes a lot of sense because he's trying to follow my rule, Archer. You know all my rules. Very good. Always play bishop f8. Actually, I want to play bishop f8. Man, that would be good, right? Yeah. Solid. Yeah, then then my your bishop's better than my bishop. I have to throw that out the window. Okay, so he moved the rook, obviously. Bishop f8, obviously. Now, if the game ended somehow, like Earthquake or one of the players died, Black has two pieces set up already for the next game. So that's good. Rook check. What's the best move? Yeah, otherwise you lose your bishop. You don't want to play king e7. That's why he played rook check. Normally, you wouldn't check somebody's king up. I would yell at you. But since king d7 loses a piece and king e7 blocked the bishop, that was very helpful. Okay. Bishop c2, that does nothing. I like that move. Now black has to move. Now it actually does do something. If I play bishop a4 and rook e8 check, you will resign. Because I'll win your bishop on f8. So I'm doing something. E4. This is the move I was talking about earlier. Black intentionally gives a pawn away for what reason? Free up space for his king. For his king, and more importantly. Rook. And not the rook, but close. Bishop. The bishop. bishop. Okay. This bishop is behind all of these pawns. They're all on dark squares, and my bishop is blocked by all of them. So if I get rid of the E pawn, my bishop can be free. That's actually what Magnus and Wesley did against each other in the game that they drew last week. And they both sacrificed a pawn so their bishops could get out, and the game ended in a draw. Magnus was much better, but he couldn't win. So he took a pawn, and now we're going to get our bishop out. Yay! Hooray! Okay, now he wants to take this pawn, so he doesn't let him. Darn Yeah, nothing happens. Okay, now we can vote again. Rook takes rook or rook b7 check? Hmm. Rook b7 check. Yeah, hopefully if you're in my class, you don't even consider rook takes rook. Now, opposite color bishops have excellent winning chances with rooks on the board. Without rooks on the board, I mean, if this was in a super GM game, this position, they would just agree to a draw. You can't legally win here. I put my king on d6, I put my pawn on f6, and we agree to a draw. There's no, there's no winning chances. Yeah. With the rooks on the board, and my rook's better than your rook. My rook's great. It's attacking everything, active. Okay, f4. This is funny because this is the same temporary pawn sacrifice that black made. White wants to move his king up, but the f2 pawn is hanging. Doesn't want to play here, blocking his own king. 
He just gives his pawn away. And he gets his king up. It doubles black's pawn. Yeah, too. but he gets to walk his king up, and yeah, black's pawn structure is very suspicious. Yeah. Okay, he saved his pawn. So both sides sacrificed a pawn to activate their pieces. Bishop e4, Zugzwang again. It's very hard for black to move here. Because if your king goes up, you're hanging this f pawn. Your king goes back, that's not good. If your rook tries to activate somehow, you're letting me queen my pawn. And if the bishop moves, I'll take this or this. And these, these can't move. So it's like, well, I got to move. It's my move. Yeah. The Germans might have a word for that. Yeah, it took that long. Okay. Rook e8. D6. I told you he'd play D6 and move your rook away. You didn't believe me, but he did. Rook e6. Rawr! I see the threat. Yeah. Here. Nope. Bishop f5. So now I'm going to go here and then here. Any way to stop that? Right, king e7, I'll go here. Then you have to play rook takes d7. Yeah. yeah. So he stopped it because he's 27-20 and you're not. And he put his hand out. And resigned. And resigned. So I'm watching one of the London chess classic games. There's a dead draw in position. And somebody offered a draw and they shook hands. And then another London chess classic game, the guy was like minus 1 million. So he resigned. And somebody on the internet was like, how do you know, how do, how do you know if he resigned or offered a draw? How do the players even know? And unfortunately, because of TV and movies, people are convinced, and a lot of kids are, that the way to offer a draw is to put your hand out. Like, because then that's how you offer a draw in a movie, is draw? And a lot of kids do that. And the way you offer a draw in real life is you offer a draw, and if the guy takes it, you shake hands. And resigning at the top level is just putting your hand out. And so I have some funny stories about that where kids are confused when their opponent's resigning because they just assume they're offering a draw when they put their hand out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, usually when the computer says plus 20, they're not agreeing to a draw. So, yeah. Okay, and Ivanchuk resigned because this pawn got too strong. So my question is, because I have a question, rookie 8 seems like a horrible blunder because he played d6, d7. Yeah? What do we do about that? What if we play rook d6, rook d8, etc.? Let's play rook d6 and then turn the engine on. Yeah, so the rook e8 is just a horrible blunder. Horrible. And that guy's the world, the world rapid champion, or the world blitz champion, world rapid champion. And it was a rapid tournament. Now, in the Blitz tournament, which finished before the Rapid tournament, I think. I'm not sure which was first. Mama Jarov came in last. And his FIDE rating is 27.99. Tough tournament. Yeah. I guess after he lost to me, he gave up all hope. Okay. How, you. How would, uh, in that previous position, how would White have made progress? If it's yeah, he would have moved around forever until, yeah. And I'm assuming Ivanchuk had seconds left. Ivanchuk is famous for losing on time. In one of the candidates tournaments where Carlson qualified to play Anand, Ivanchuk lost five games on time. So very suspicious. In a rapid tournament, I'm sure he had very little time on his clock. And yeah, and if he played correctly, maybe he wouldn't have won. Hmm? How old is he? Ivanchuk? Yeah. It's 48 or 49. So it's one of them. Rapid doesn't work as well as you get older, does it? Well, that's arguable. You could argue, and I would, that you actually aren't as bad and rapid as in slow chess when you get older. Because in slow chess, if you're playing a five-hour game, Archer's favorite, <laughs> right? And you play a five-hour game, and the next day you play a five-hour game, the next day you play a five-hour game, the younger people have an advantage. And I'm a bridge player, of course. And in bridge, I compare bridge to, like, blitz chess. Bridge is a card game you've never heard of. And... In bridge, a lot of the best players in the world are, are not young. And the reason is a bridge hand takes like six minutes. So you can't like fall asleep during a bridge hand, but in a chess game, 
uh, it's the fifth or sixth hour you can get tired right archer yeah. yeah so yeah for that reason if you're an older person you don't want to play a six hour chess game every day um but if you want to play like a six minute chess game that's that's okay um yeah like karpov for example is much better in blitz than in slow chess now because he's and I talked to him about it. He said you lose energy. Okay, this is Carlson Adams. This was uh, the first game Carlson won in round seven. And he was worse the whole game. But, okay, then oh, things I happened. Did. Yeah. So he played King E1, which I like. And here, Black thought forever and confused the commentators. He made a move that is very anti-positional. What's the most obvious move for Black? C3. C3. And that's the best move, and that's what they expected. He thought forever, Adams, and he played B3. What? Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. And, yeah, the, the thinking a long time usually isn't good. And Archer's like, I know it. So no matter what your level is, if you think more than 15 minutes on a move, your move's no good. Yeah. So he thought forever on this move and played B3, and it's no good. Yeah. Um. That was very confusing to the commentators because C3, rawr, and the computer says equal. Okay, now white's better. Rook B7, so he's getting behind the more advanced pawn. In case C3 comes, he's already behind this pawn. King E6, check. And he attacks the pawn. That's attacked a lot. Then he took it. And he took that pawn. And he took that pawn. So, man, Black has some pretty strong pawns, and they're gone. This past pawn is not very strong. That's over there. When they were over here, then, okay, could queen. That pawn's not going to queen. King d8, check. Rook there, attacking the f-pawn. Attacking the knight, check. Okay, and now, for any grandmaster slash super grandmaster, this move is played instantly. Exactly. Now you have two choices of move here. You can play either one. I accept either one. What's the move you would all play? All of you. Book of Correct. And what's the other move? Rook well, your bishop's attacked. Oh, so careful. B3. Yeah, B3. Yeah. So he played check because now black has to make a decision. And when the lecture started, and I made fun of all of you, I said this would happen. Well, he said the king would move back so that you forget about moving the king forward. Right? Yeah, exactly. So what should he do? So what should he do? Yeah, he should play king c6, and the computer says, like, white slightly better. But he was worried maybe he'll get mated. Maybe. He might get mated. King's getting sort of trapped. So he went there. Oh, oh, horrible. Yeah, the computer didn't like that move because it loses. And now b3. So rook f7 check was pretty cool. He played king b8 without thinking at all. He didn't think at all in that position. I mean, that was really helpful to white. This is the worst king ever, and this is great. Okay. Rook h2. And now this was a very nice move. Very nice. Wow, I like this move a lot. What's the winning move for white? See, Black has a very simple idea. Was that simple enough? Yeah. B4 is risky. <laughs> but you're still you're still two thirds correct. Not mathematicians here. Knight B4. Knight B4. I have a threat. See my threat? Oh. If you play Rook A5, I got another threat. Yeah. What are you going to do about knight a6? Mm -hmm. What's that? Resign. Not resign. Fight. Move the, king. move the king. What else can you do? Uh, move rook h6. Ooh, rook h6. That doesn't really stop knight a6, though. I'll still do it. Yeah. yeah, I think you have to play king c8. I don't think there is another move, is there? What's the, is there another move? I mean, very simple fork, but I don't see a way to stop it. King c8. But is there another move? That stops knight a6? 
King A8, then I'm going to play bishop d5 check and win your rook because I still got knight a6. I got everything. Okay, so you play king c8 because he's 2700. Knight a6. Where's the rook going? Which rook? The rook that I'm attacking. Yeah, that, that one. No, uh, c7. C6. C7? Wow. C6. Well, you got two squares c6 and a5. Man, it's good to see several moves ahead. That helps. There, 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 there. Wow. Okay, so for rook a5, I go check, check, check. Yeah, I defend. My well, grand mash on defend. You go check, 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 and take this rook. Right, Archer? Yeah. The Archer says, yeah. Check. You have one legal move, right? Check. If you play king c8, I can win either rook. Rook d5 check or rook d2 check. So you go here. Check. You have one legal move. Check. You have one legal move. Isn't there a lot of legal moves? No. There was, what do you mean? A lot of legal moves. What? King b7, like earlier. Earlier. No? King b7 is not legal. Yes, oh, okay. No. Oh. I wouldn't lie to you. Yeah, no. So king g8, and I thought I could play rook here check. Darn, I can't cheat. <laughs> That's sad. Rook takes f5. Rook takes f5, and then I take your rook. Yeah. You think Magnus saw that? Yeah. You think Adam saw that? Yeah. So he played. Rook c6. Rook c6. Yeah. Rook check. Uh-oh. Can't go to d7, can't go to b7, but you have to do it. Oh, yeah. He's like, wait a minute. Yeah. The truth hurts. Yeah. And then he played on a little because he was mad. Yeah, he's got to be pretty mad. Yeah. Okay, then he resigned. Yeah. He seemed pretty cool on the interview afterwards. Nah, he, nah he's not. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, king b8. Oh, horrible. Man. Then, then white had three pieces attacking the king. That was a lot of pieces. Okay, last but not least is Adams. Yeah, this was actually pretty funny. So two against one, and Adams is old. So he should draw easily because it's a draw. And the older players should have experience in end games, and the younger players like, what's an end game? Okay, so black played rook here. You. Well, okay, but you, I wouldn't look at this and just say to myself, oh, it's a draw. No, you, you wouldn't, playing. but a, a super GM knows two against one's a draw. Two to one's a draw. Yeah. Okay. And black has winning chances because he has a passed pawn. Now, it's not like, oh, it's a draw, let's stop the game. It should be a draw. But okay. white has to defend properly. And if it's a 20-year-old playing, then maybe they won't defend properly. But somebody who's played end games for 30 years should defend properly. <clears throat> well, or should. When you say two against one, you mean two, you two pawn, the Yeah, two pawns to one. Okay. And if this pawn was here, it would be a real easy draw if there's no passed pawns. Okay. But here, black has some winning chances. Yeah. Okay. okay. And actually, after check, which is okay, white made the losing move here. And he lost the game. And I believe there's only one move that draws. Oh, you asked me for the losing move? <laughs> I, hope they, I, hope they, I hope they got that. <laughs> well, if it was Adams, I guess it's the losing move. But let's play the drawing move. Let's be better than Adams. Why rook h2 instead of any other move? Why'd you pick that one? Because it defends that rank, and the king can move. Like, it, it can, I mean, it can be shielded by the pawn, potentially, if the king needs to move h3. I don't know. Okay. So, if I was giving Adams an endgame lesson, which I guess I should, because he lost that other ending, now he's going to lose this one. 
in the interview, he said he gave a lot of early Christmas presents because he took all these drawn and better positions and lost them. So the way Black's going to win, as in almost every endgame, is to make a queen. And if Black doesn't push his pawns, Black's not going to win. The pawn stand f6 and e5 is a draw. If he queens his e-pawn, he'll win. Okay? So we can actually stop Black from moving one of his pawns forever by playing. G4. Matt Larson recommended. Yeah, G4, and then Black just, White just chills. And I don't think Black's going to play F5. So this is just a draw because White just does nothing. And Black can't move forward. Black's king can't move up. His pawn can't move up. And if he moves his king around here, he's going to lose his F pawn. So he's not going to win one against one. So this is a draw. Okay, he played Rook H4, and now he's actually losing. So what's how do you, how do you win? You. Well, I'm sorry. Can I go back to the other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I look at this and all I'm worried about is rook a three from white. Yep, that's fine. I move my king. Yeah. Yep. Oh. I just move my king around, move my rook back and forth. I chill. Like your king, you don't have a king. If your king can't move up, oh, you don't have a king. My king can go here, here, here. My rook can go here, here, here. It's great. Is there a way that he can force the king to be tied to defending the g-pawn while he pushes the e-pawn forward? That's possible. Then you'll probably lose your e-pawn. Because your e-pawn is pretty well defended now. The fewer pawns that are on the board, the easier it is to draw. If it's five against four, there's good winning chances. If it's one against zero, for a grandmaster, that's a dead draw. So... so so it's not going to yeah. work to push the e-pawn? You could push the e-pawn. Yeah, I'm not going to stop you. I move my rook somewhere. I have a lot more squares now. I can activate my rook. They're all good. I don't see any problem with any of them. So, I don't know. Anywhere. I'll just move my rook here, 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 here. And you don't have a king. The black's king is never going to move up. My rook is stopping your king forever. That's called cutting the king off. You can cut it off with your rook this way or this way. Yeah, Depends but, on what you do. But black's cutting white off. Right. So I draw. So, so draw. Okay. <laughs> right. I move my king back and forth forever. Okay. If you play e3, that's that's the end of your moving your pawn. Can't move either pawn now. Okay. But then what about when he moves his rook to a4 and attacks your pawn? Then I trade pawns. I've never been so happy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, that's, okay. For a GM, this is they wouldn't play this out. Too drawn. Okay. If I was playing one of you guys, I'd, I'd win. But... But GM's, <laughs> GM's is a draw for sure. Yeah. Okay. So G4 is a draw. And he's in some time trouble. Okay. So he played Rook H4. Black played F5. Now there's no more G4. He played G4. I'll play F4. Two pass pawns. Now I'm winning. Now I just move up. And he can't stop me. And he moved up. Yeah. Kept moving up. Yeah. He's moving up to the east side. I had a feeling that was well, you know, right? The kids know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Television show you've never heard of. Yeah. Okay. Check. Move the king up. All right. So does, does black want to trade these pawns? No. no. So black should defend his pawn. There's two ways to defend it. The wrong way you guys would do and the right way. So you can legally defend it here or here. Which is better? The F file or the fifth rank? F file. The F file. If you defend on the fifth rank, I could play here and G4, maybe white wins. Yeah. You defend it here, then you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he played. A3, Rook A3. Rook A3. Rook F3. What did Black do? I teach it every endgame class. That's all I ever say ever. King G2. King G2. Move your king up. Yeah. Man, the truth hurts. King E2. Check. What do I teach in the class? He just said it. So what did he do? King F1. Yeah. 
<laughs> move your king up. <laughs> I tell you, move your king up, and you're like, but, but I don't want to move my king up. <laughs> now when I go here, I'm gonna queen my e pawn. You're you I you 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 can't well, you, you can't go anywhere. Yeah, that's the pawn I want to queen, the one that's queening, not the one that this pawn is blocking. Yep, g4, playing for tricks, because I'm going to play rook f3 check and queen my e-pawn. So he's like, all right, g4, I don't know. Now what do you do? I believe there's only one move that wins. That could be wrong. There's only one move that wins. Rook f3, yep. Kick that king out. Rawr. Very simple plan. Good plan, right? Takes. Takes. And now if pawn takes, I queen. So he took this. I'm sneaky, right? Now what do you do? Now, this is funny. We were talking about cutting the king off this way yeah. earlier, and I said you could also do it that way. Mm -hmm. Rook f8. Yeah, rook f8. Now, you don't play rook f6, he could attack your rook later with tempo. It would still win, but yeah. Man, now I don't think the white king is going to help that pawn too much, is it? <laughs> yeah. So while you're doing this, which you can't do, because if you go here, I'll go here and take your pawn. So you can't even do that. And you can't do this, it's illegal. And I have a very simple plan. <clears throat> and I assume if I leave it on for 10 seconds, it'll announce me. Unless it's less than 10 seconds. I don't know. Yeah, less than 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so White resigned, obviously. So that was a drawn ending, but one mistake, and he was lost. And Black moved his king all the way to F1, as recommended by me in every lecture. Move your king up. And he had a passed pawn, and he pushed his passed pawns, and if White had played G4, he never would have played F5. Then it would have been harder to move his pawns forward. As it was, F5, E4, move his king up, and he won. And that was actually very funny, because... At this point in time, everybody was drawing all their games, as you all know. Well, he does. Round one, all draws. Round two, all draws. Round three, all draws. Round four. There was one win at the end. It was, uh, yeah. Was it? Round four, all draws. Round five, there was one win. After there were four draws, the last game was one. Was it Fabi that won that? that game? N nobody knows. Yes. The next round, one win again. Fabi won. So in this point in the tournament, Adams and Nepomniachtchi were draw, 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 draw. Adams lost to draw an end game. Then he lost all of his games. And Nepomniachtchi won all his games. So this was like the turning point. Then Nepo, as you all know, beat Carlson with the black pieces yeah. after this game. He's like, oh, I, I can beat somebody. So, Nepo, so Nepo, after drawing like his first five games, won three in a row, round six, seven, and eight. Because he got caught. Yeah, I won a game. Now I can keep winning. And Adams is like, what? I lost this draw ending, and then he kept losing. Better against Carlson, he lost. Better position against Caruana, he lost. He lost three games in the end, and he came in last place. Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah. So end games are tough, but move your king down the board and get queens, and then you'll win. Or you could not move your king and lose like everybody else did. That's up to you. Anyway, end games are tough. The guys are 2,700. They still don't play that well. Now, before we finish the lecture... I want to complain slightly. A lot of people will tell you the old masters, they played the end game great. And the kids today can't play the endings. Blunder, blunder, blunder. One of the reasons for that is we play faster time controls and we have no adjournments. If you adjourn the game and analyze it overnight, you'll play the end game pretty well. If you just keep playing and it's a six hour, seven hour game, then you won't play too well. So they don't play too well. They're tired and they didn't analyze it. If you play four hours or five hours and adjourn for overnight, then you can play the end game well. So they had a slight advantage, you know, back in the day. You kids are like, what's an adjournment? I'm confused. In fact, all of you are like that. But I had adjournments. Rawr. I had a game adjourned twice. It took three days to finish the game. And I lost. And it was a drawn ending I lost. How do they decide when you adjourn it? And back in the day when they did that, you played a certain amount of time that they would adjourn, either four or five or six hours, then they would stop. Yeah. Yeah, but I had a game. Yeah, that game never ended, but I lost. I do have a really good adjournment story where we adjourned, we played the next day, and I figured out the rest of the game. So that was, that was nice. And my opponent did not, so he was confused. 
My analysis was better than his. Now, if you adjourn games, that would be slightly unfair because you turn on your engine and go to sleep. And the engine says, do that, and you win. You're like, all right. So that's, yeah. we had adjournments, so you couldn't have computers just tell you what to do. Okay, and my favorite ending of the class. Class. Class is dismissed. Yeah.